Good morning. Morning. So welcome. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry for the little delay. Um, we had some technical difficulties. Yeah. So um, let us know first in the chat if you can hear us, um, just so that when we're talking, you're we're not talking to talking to nothing. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, thanks for joining us on your Sunday morning. Um, we really appreciate you coming here. This is Analog Dialogue, where we talk about all things analog. I'm Emil. And I'm Kay. Yeah, so grab something to drink and we're gonna sit down and start talking about- Pens. Pens, yay. yay. <laughs> um, so first, is sound working okay? What's up? Um, AC said no audio, but the others oh. said they can hear. Oh. Okay. So it should be working for everybody. Um, I hope so. Yeah, but if, if it's not working, um, just say something in the comments and we can kind of um, fix it up as we go. Yes. Um, but yeah, so you all might have seen on our um, on our Instagram that we recently went to the California Pen Show. Yes. Um, and we are not sponsored by the Pen Show, but it did make us think like, you know, oh, it would be fun to talk about some of our pens. Um, we use. Yeah, yeah. Um, some of the things from here, um, a lot of them not. No, so, yeah. Yeah, but we wanted to talk about, I don't know, like, we like talking about what kinds of things we mm -hmm. like to use. So we thought that that might be like, a fun thing to yeah. have everyone together. For. And then disclaimer, I'm not a pen like master. I don't know a lot about pens, so <laughs> don't ask too many detailed things. Um, but this is something that we wanted to kind of share what we enjoy using every yeah. day and kind of curious to see what you like to use. <laughs> um, so hopefully everyone can join us on that. Yeah, um, and then um, let's see, today uh, behind the screen we have Wakako. Wakako is going to be managing the comments. Um, we are going to have a Q&A at the very end. Um, so whenever um, you have a question, feel free to leave it. We won't be able to answer it right away, um, but Wakako will be picking them at the end so that we can go through as many as possible. Um, yeah, so let's go ahead and get started. So first, when we were talking about like what kind of pens we want to talk mm -hmm. about, we figured we would start with um, ballpoint pens and gel pens. Because yes. I feel like, you know, whether you use very fancy pens or not, that's pretty accessible and familiar mm -hmm. to everybody. Affordable. Um, affordable. Um, and then like pretty easy to use, really mm -hmm. user friendly. Um, so we're going to start with that. Yeah. Um, so with that, we're going to go into the front face or the downward facing camera. So if y'all can give us just a second. Everything good okay? can y'all hear us okay <laughs> this is much harder than it needs to be isn't it 
Sunday morning glitch. Okay. Good morning. It's <laughs> Sunday. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, thank you for our patience. Thank you for, yeah. for staying with us. Yeah. Um, okay. So you were talking about the yeah, style, style fit. fit. Um, I use this a lot. And this is like my very first pen that I purchased that was like meant for journaling. Mm -hmm. So I, when I first start journaling, I got super into Hobonichi, okay. original one. And then I was doing a lot of research of like what kind of no, uh, pen would not like be too strong for Hobonichi Tomoe River paper. Mm -hmm. And this one was the one that was recommended. Um, it doesn't really do a lot of ghosting and it writes really small, so a six size notebook really helped. Okay. Um, so yeah, this is what I love to use. And then this one, I love it so much to the point where I started using a lot of these like multifunction pen and I use non uni body. Like mm -hmm. this is Pilot, all wood um, one, and I still use the uni style, pe uh, style fit pen inside okay. and I use style G one and also replaced it with the uni style fit. So I'm I'm obsessed with this um pen. Okay. So yeah. and like specifically this ink. Um and then do you use any specific colors or is it do you like yeah. mix it up a lot or so I actually brought some lethals uh, that I usually use in my rotation. So I use a lot of um this like brown black and just regular black and blue black so i like a lot of like darker colors and i used to use also like light blues and orange but i realize i don't use them as often mm -hmm. and i just stick with the blue black brown black and black right yeah so that's all i use i think okay um yeah, yeah and i um, also love this pen. So this is, yeah, this is my pen case. Um, and I usually have um, this one, same Yay. one as you, um, the four function pen. Um, I actually have um, Jetstream uh, mm. 0.38 in here. Um, and that's with, I believe all of the colors, maybe the red and the, uh, the red and the blue might be 0.5. Oh, but, okay. um, yeah, and in general, usually I have Jetstream in here. Um, to anyone who might be wondering, uh, Jetstream 0.5 um, is what uh, Eunice uses. We get that question a lot. A lot. Um, so yeah, Jetstream 0.5, usually also in a multi-pen. I know that Eunice also has this one, um, but I don't know if this is the one that she's always using mm. for that. Um, but yeah. She might be using the Lamy. Yeah, yeah, um, possibly. But this is... Um, I, I really do like this body. I don't know if it really shows across mm -hmm. in this one because it is like matte. Mm -hmm. um, and then this like little rubber part is supposedly antimicrobial. Um, I don't think I would notice the difference, but especially in pandemic times, that was that mm -hmm. was nice to know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and this one does have like also like a pencil, pencil. area. And I, I don't know if you use this part, but I do for um, plans that are not set mm -hmm. quite yet. Um, yeah, so that I can check in on it mm -hmm. later. Um, yeah, yeah, and this comes in black too, right? Yes, it yeah. comes in black, um, which is also very handsome. Yeah. And then the other one that I use is part of, so um, this is my blotter. <laughs> um, and then I have the, I have their like pen insert um, and I have the Lily put ballpoint pen in here. And then this I also have, um, I've used Jetstream with this, um, but right now I have it filled with, um, let me see, Zebra ESB, I believe. Um, yeah, Zebra ESB. Um, and that's kind of like a, I wanna say it's like a hybrid refill. So mm. it is, I would, if I was going to compare it most, I, I would say it's, it's ballpoint. Um, but they do say it's like a hybrid. I do like how smooth this one is. Um, but I do tend to change my um, refills pretty often. Um, so it might not be this next mm. week. Um, is it hard to find the pen refill that fits your tiny pen? Not really. Um, mm. I feel like, you know, different pen 
refills are going to have like different types. So once you learn the type of refill something uses, like you can kind of just go from there and mm -hmm. then find out which ones are the same type. Um, but like if you don't know, it, it is definitely something that you're going to want to pay attention to yeah. because like, you know, these re refills are not going to be compatible with like, you know, these ones right mm -hmm. here. Um, even if like maybe they have the same refill in different kind of like style. So they have like, you know, Jetstream for this one and mm -hmm. this one, mm -hmm. um, but you can't use the same refill for both, um, if that makes any sense. Um, but yeah, I really like this. I really like how small it is and how perfectly it yeah, fits in here. Yeah, so cute. Yeah. Um, so usually I have these two together and always kind of like on the go with mm -hmm. me, um, which has been super useful. Mm -hmm. um, so I think in terms of ballpoint and gel, that's what it's really going to be like for us. Yeah. Um, next, we're kind of going to talk a little bit about like almost like miscellaneous items. So kind of like highlighters and like brush, brush pens. pens, like kind of things that are not like they're still in the pen category. Mm -hmm. You still might keep them in your pen case. Writing instruments. Yes, okay. yes. But it's not like, I don't know, a, like a pen that you would mm -hmm. use to write down your calendar. Um, so I like using um, mild liners. Yeah. I have been using mild liners for like five years. Oh, wow. Something like that. Mm -hmm. I want to say that mild liners was my first like purchase for journaling like oh, okay. you know when I bought specifically something um for okay. journaling with um it was mild liners because okay. I already had a ton of pens mm -hmm. um but yeah I really like them um this one is let's see this one's the mild beige and that comes in like this the okay. mild natural yeah set. the natural set that um we do carry but this one is um smoke blue which uh we carry individually as well um but usually like I have I have so many of these, you guys. Um, usually I'll just pick a couple and then th those are the ones I'll use for a little while um, so that I'm not carrying like a whole bunch mm, of them. Like a 10 highlighters. Yeah, all in my, <laughs> my pouch because um, I'm not going to use that many. Yeah. How do you pick the two? Do you random or do you have like a color scheme that you're going to stick with for that month? Or um, Usually I have a color scheme. This mm -hmm. year I'm trying to do like a set color scheme every month. And that includes like, I'll, I'll go into it a little bit more when I talk about fountain pens, mm -hmm. but in terms of like how my fountain pens are inked and then, you know, what highlighters I'm using. Like I almost always have the ballpoint pen just because that's kind of like a easy standard. Mm -hmm. um, but those things I usually try to rotate in a way that matches each other. So right now it's the blue and the beige, but I think last month it was um, like a, like the pink from the natural set mm -hmm. with this blue okay so it kind of it does rotate and i guess that's how i would choose mm -hmm. um so i'm thinking like of an overall color scheme mm -hmm. with the inks and such cool um yeah and then other than that um right now i have um my black wing uh 602 pencil in here um i don't always have this in here but i did have it recently because i was traveling and i thought I might do some sketching. Mm -hmm. um, so it's nice to have, um, you a know, pencil. a pencil there, like, and I'll just kind of carry it whether I, mm -hmm. I feel like I'll need it for wherever I'm going. Um, but yeah, I think that that's it for me for highlighters mm -hmm. and um, like kind of miscellaneous things. Yeah, for me, I don't yeah. usually use a lot of highlighters. Okay. But I do use my, this one, the uh, Sailor Shkiori markers brush pens mm -hmm. and these actually have like a two one side is like a big like a thicker um what is it tip mm -hmm. and then the other side has like a very fine tip okay and this one actually the color is or the color of the markers are same as the shikiori fountain pen inks okay so it kind of matches which is really fun but i use these for like a big titles uh, on my okay. journal so like I don't know. I will just like say hello. Like it would be fun to just kind of like have a big title mm -hmm. for my journaling, and then I will use different colors to just like underline it, and it doesn't smudge. Oh, that's usually, really nice. which yeah. is really nice, and like it's just very versatile marker. Then I've had this for like two years. And oh, really? I'm running out of ink. Maybe because I don't use it for like. A whole page right i'm just using it as like a title or subtitles right um but yeah i use this a lot 
and I like the design of yeah. the, the pens themselves. And I think there's like a little color listing. So sometimes like I'll go in details, but I do have like a stack of a sailor cartilage, like the fountain pen ink cartilages. Oh, okay. And it has a name and then it has ink, but sometimes we can't really tell like what color is this. Is this blue or right. this purple? So I use this to kind of reference back and forth of what color I of see. ink that is. But yeah, this is what I use. And is this something that you would say like you keep at home or do you take out a couple here or there? Or like... I actually keep this at home. And just yeah. like keep them all together, mm -hmm. use I, them as needed. Yeah, I put it in my journaling cart. Okay. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah, that's cute, <laughs> journaling card. Um, but yeah, that's really interesting because I, I almost never use brush pens. Yeah, for, this is like my first um, time. Yeah. Um, this is where I got like, I've been kind of getting into learning more about textile and typography. Okay. And like all these like traditional Japanese fonts, like hand-drawn logos. Mm -hmm. So I use this to kind of practice that too, like a kind of big headlines and I don't know. It's it's I won't go in details, but <laughs> this is like something I will use to kind of stylize text and headlines. I see. Yeah. That's cute. Um and I'm really shocked that it doesn't bleed. That that was really nice. Yeah. Uh, thank you for showing us mm, that. Okay. Um okay, so now we're gonna go into the next topic, which is the one that we could pretty much talk about the entire day um, <laughs> yeah. if we wanted to so that's going to be fountain pens yeah. um like why don't you start with yours My fountain pens. Then. Um, i don't we know have a matching yeah we have pen case yeah we have a lot of like matching <laughs> but different colors yeah, right? different colors yeah so i usually keep five inked fountain pens in my pen case and currently it's all different <laughs> it, there's like no similarity like it's all different brands mm -hmm. but i one thing i do is that i always keep platinum production i think that's what it's pronounced i always keep this one and i ink it with a carbon ink which is like the, this one like a very black ink <laughs> um i mainly use this to like draw Okay. And I my purpose for using this pen specifically and this ink is to practice my fear of making a mistake. Oh, like okay. I'm not practicing be okay. Yeah. To make mistake, I guess. Um so I have like a uh, a notebook. Yeah, I have a notebook that's like ugly imperfect sketchbook. <laughs> And I started in February of last year. So it's been a year and okay. slow progress, but like essentially I journal or I will draw um, Pokemon. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and I like, there's a lot of misspelling. There's a lot of like awkward shaped drawings and I'm trying to be okay with it. But it's like my focus is just to use one ink, one pen and just draw. So this is something I will always have in my rotation. Mm -hmm. um, the other stuff, I think, I love the nut pen. <laughs> <laughs> um, I got this like maybe last last fall. Uh, so this um, one is Sailor, Sailor Pro Gear Slim. Yeah, and this one actually has the same. I just put the same ink as this green. Oh, okay. Because um, I had a cartilage that I. So it's like slightly different. Maybe it's not the same color. But yeah, this is the, what is it? I can't remember. The Tokiwa Mats ink. Mm. Um, and it has a similar, like, it's hard to see. Oh, yeah. did it stop? Oh. Yeah. But yeah, this is like a medium fine nib. And once it dries, it does kind of look kinda, like yeah. yeah. So yeah, I wanted to like share show you what I meant by like I have a lot of security cartilage is like I went to a pen show or blah, what is it called Bungu Joshi Haku in Japan it's mm -hmm. like a stationary event mm -hmm. and they had a sailor booth where they had like a huge bowl filled with ink cartilages mm -hmm. and then they'll give you a ladle 
and you can get two scoops. <laughs> as like it, there's no like limit, like just two scoops, so you can get as many you know ink as that's possible in one scoop, and you get two. It's so dangerous. So yeah, and it's random. And it's all like mixed mm -hmm. in, so you can't really like pinpoint which one you're gonna get. So I've had this for a while. Okay. <laughs> and I'm trying to use it up as many, but I I actually um made a list of like which ink cartilages I have mm -hmm. and I'm like trying to mark like how many I have used so that I'm like okay these I have tried but I have a lot of red yeah so like I don't huh. ever use a lot of red so it's been hard for me to use it up I see. <laughs> if anyone wants it I'll <laughs> give it to you <laughs> just ask me but yeah uh, I've been obsessed with this like security cartilages because I don't have to commit to the whole ink bottle. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, they have a lot of different colors and a lot of really yeah. beautiful colors. So and I, I wanted to try it all. So yeah. that whole scooping with a radial helped mm -hmm. a lot. Um, yeah, and then other miscellaneous. <laughs> miscellaneous. And, and other. Yeah. No. no, I love them all. I love them all. Um, is there yeah. any other one that you wanted to go into? or uh, Maybe this one. This one I also love um i got this used through instagram somebody was selling it and um this is the pilot kaide maple okay um pen and it's in fine nib and i have i think currently i have the um iroshizuku tsukushi ink inside and it's really pretty it's like fun to draw uh, write in it and the ink kind of matches the body Mm -hmm. It's like hard to see. Sorry, look at this one. But yeah, I think Eunice recently purchased this pen. <laughs> same, the same wooden <laughs> pen. Yes. Um, but I lo I love this pen because I love anything wood and natural mm -hmm. material. So this been kind of like I think it's getting kind of shiny too. When I first got it, it was a little bit lighter, mm -hmm. but because of my hand oils, I think it's getting a little darker. That's cool though. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I think those are the two, well, three main pens that I usually use. And then the other two, it's like rotational. Okay. I have like Twisby and I have Lamy. Okay. But yeah, those are like more fun, fun stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Um, what kinds of papers do you like using with those ink specs? Because you're talking a lot about the Sailor Shikiori. So is mm -hmm. there a specific paper that you feel like, you know, does best with the Sailor Shikiori ink? I think anything with Tomoe River, like Hobonichi paper, do really well. I don't know if I have any writing samples, but I could, I could probably, sorry, I'm like off screen. Um, Biscuity. And I do love using like MD paper too. Mm -hmm. I just, so that's like mainly what I use for like traveler's notebook inserts is like a lot of like cream or white MD paper, mm -hmm. but you can kind of see like, it's like really hard to show, but. But as it's drying, it's mm -hmm. having a little bit more of like the shading mm -hmm. showing to it. And then like it doesn't seep through it does have a little bit of ghosting but it doesn't bother me mm -hmm. as much so i use a lot um of my fountain pens with the hobonichi paper and i just started the cousin mm -hmm. size this year so that's what i mainly journal in okay yeah um and do you always have um the pens inked with the same kinds of ink or do you like kind of <gasps> Like, or is there like some that, because you said this one always has the carbon black. Yeah, so um, like I have a really strange, not strange, I have a personal rule that I usually stick with. Mm -hmm. is like I try to use similar or same brand body and ink. Okay. Um, it's, I think, especially for Sailor, because I've had some other ink inside of Sailor pen and it never writes smoothly for me hmm. and it could be just a nib i might need to get it regrinded but it never is an issue when i have a sailor ink so at least for the sailor pens i try to keep sailor ink mm -hmm. 
And then like, I, I guess these two too, like the Pilot, well, not Pilot, Platinum. This is Platinum Pen and I have Platinum Carbon Ink. Mm -hmm. um, and this one obviously is like Pilot Pen with Pilot Iroshizuku Ink. So I do try to keep same brands, I guess, with body and the ink. Right. Except for Twisby be and like <laughs> <laughs> these two are like more fun. Like I have a lot of like uh, like just ink, random inks or like samples that I get from friends. So like these two, like I never have issues with like having different types of like inks inside. It just writes fine, mm -hmm. uh, which I love about these two pens. So these two are like more fun, spontaneous pens that I'm like. Sometimes the body doesn't match with the ink. Sometimes the brand doesn't match with the body. Mm -hmm. So okay. these are my little personal rule for my film dance. Okay. Yeah. Um, I feel like, yeah, talking to you about this was really interesting. The, mm -hmm. the rule that people set for themselves on mm -hmm. like what ink I'm going to use with what pen um, and how people organize yeah. um, the colors that they use is really interesting. Yeah. So share yours because I'm curious about your pens and how you use your pens. Um, okay, so uh, I have two pen cases. They're both the Yurilifu pen cases. One is like the three pen mm -hmm. um, and then the other one is like, you know, the same one that you have, um, the pen case. And um, I'm going to go through the ones that are in this one first. So this one is kind of like, you know, my, my planner is in here. Um, this one is usually the one that I always have with me. Um, this one is the one that stays at home. Um, and so because of that, the pens that are in here in terms of like fountain pens are going to rotate a lot. This is just what I happen to have right now. Um, so I'm going to bring up some paper in case we need it. And this is a codex, MD codex. Yeah, this is the MD codex dot. Um, and I think MD paper is probably my favorite paper mm -hmm. to use um, with fountain pens. Um, I love Tomoe River paper that, I mean, I'm using the Hobonichi Weeks and that's what is inside. Mm -hmm. um, but I feel like um, the amount of time it takes to dry, um, it, it definitely gets yeah. um, on my nerves sometimes <laughs> if I'm like in a hurry. Um, so it's nice with um, the MD paper because even though it doesn't show quite as much um, shading or sheen mm. as um, Tomoe River paper, I feel like you can still see a lot mm -hmm. of the color variation. And also just like the off-white color is like really lovely. Nice. Um, yeah, but right now I have um, two um, Kawekos. Um, I think th this is one of the first fountain pens I've ever gotten. So this one is the Macchiato one. Um, I feel like this one is pretty popular, common and yeah. popular. I see a lot of people really enjoying it. Mm -hmm. um, and. I have this one filled with um, Sailor 273, so it kind of matches the body. Mm. Um, Sailor 273 is kind of like a pinkish, beige-ish color. Um, so it's a little hard to see because it is a light color, um, but kind of like that. Really pretty, matches the body. Um, Cute. Yeah. And then I have in my, like my iridescent pearl one, mm -hmm. um, I have Sailor 123, which also kind of matches the body. I, I do enjoy matching the body color with, with the, the ink, ink if I can, but it's not, for me, that it's not always like that because mm -hmm. I do have inks that don't match any of my pens. So um, so that's Sailor 123. Um, yeah, I really like these. But I like to rotate the colors that are in here. Um, and then how I usually have it is that I have um, at least one pen um, one fountain pen that is in this um, pouch that is like kind of like a lighter color mm -hmm. um, kind of like I feel like maybe this like pink one would be and then one that has like a darker color so this one has one two three and I feel like it's kind of in between but it can be used dark mm -hmm. um, and then this one um, is kind of the one that has my darkest ink right now um, other than these guys over here. This one is the Sailor um, Pro Gear, and this one is um, Champagne Green. It was a collaboration so with, pretty. yeah, with um, Launcher. Um, I wanna see like the size difference of Pro Gear Slim. Yeah. And then the Pro Gear. So, so it's it's pretty, yeah, yeah, we can kind of set it down next to each other, but it's pretty subtle, but 
um, it does kind of make a difference. Mm -hmm. And I have a pro gear slim as well. So it's kind of like, I do feel the difference yeah. in them. Not enough, I mean, my hands are small, so not enough that it makes like a huge difference mm -hmm. for me. Um, but it is kind of interesting, the, really the size and like how that can fit differently. Um, but yeah, this is really nice. It's like a um, transparent body. It's kind of like hard to see in this light, but it is like a dark green, like a champagne bottle green. Um, and right now I have, um, this one is an EF nib. Mm -hmm. And then this one I recently just had tuned at the pen show. Uh, yeah, at the pen show. Um, so thank I, you. Many of them, um, us have seen the BK Instagram post. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so that was me asking about the pens and such. Yeah. Um, so I got two of them ground. This one was the first one. This one, I, I didn't get it resized or anything. I just had it like um, tuned because I was having like a hard time. I did buy this one used and the nib was always kind of a little weird um, mm. where it like worked, but sometimes it would kind of like skip or seem really, really dry. Mm. Um, it really- It's annoying, right? When you're writing yeah. along sentences yeah exactly so it was kind of like i really enjoy like the width of it um and it it writes a lot nicer mm. now um so and what kind of ink do you have in there? this one you know this one is kind of unusual like because i've been using these guys so much for my blacks i was like i'll just put in like a different color mm. um this one i think is lamy turquoise okay um i got it I think a friend gave me a sample and it wasn't labeled. So okay. I'm like, I think it's either Lamy Turquoise or Pelican Turquoise. Okay. Um, one or the other. Yeah, one or the other. Um, but right now with my color scheme that I have set up, it just yeah, like kind blue of- blue and beige. Yeah, yeah. And it, it's fun and I, I do like the color. So um, a lot of what I do with my planner is so that- So cute. Yeah, like because I have the different colors, it kind of helps me to, um, differentiate the, I guess the priority mm. of what I'm writing. So a lot of the times, like I use the ballpoint pen um, for m almost everything, like the to-do list mm -hmm. and like all the, the big notes. Um, I have the mild liners highlighting kind of like some of the appointments mm -hmm. that I have. Um, and then the lighter pens are kind of like notes that I put in throughout the day. So these are things where it's like, I'm writing it because I want to remember, but it doesn't need to be the first thing mm -hmm. I see on the page. So that kind of like knocks it back a little bit. And then right now I have like the turquoise. Um, usually it is a darker color, like a, a green or like mm -hmm. um, a dark, dark blue. But right now I have like the turquoise, which has been kind of fun, um, a little bit brighter for spring and such. But I have that as like my main, um, you know, call out mm -hmm. for what is going on. Um, in the week but i love it it's yeah like a, you said it's a visual hierarchy right like that you have a system yeah yeah so it is a visual hierarchy um and it just kind of helps me to prioritize what information i'm looking at because mm -hmm. um if it's all black or like one color i tend everything tends to blend in together and i kind of don't know what is important mm -hmm. in my schedule anymore or i like you know because of all this other like writing i might miss like an appointment mm -hmm. um so it's it's just for me to be able to um organize information mm -hmm. a little bit nicer um especially with such a small space like you can tell like you know this writing is going to be different from what's written mm -hmm. here um but yeah and i think like i've noticed that if i choose two to three colors um including the black mm -hmm. and i kind of use those ones i like that's when i like the way the page looks the best mm -hmm. um when i have like multiple colors like that and that's just kind of what i figured out i like yeah. from trial and error um yeah so usually a light ink and a dark ink at least right now i have um three in here but yeah, i love it i love how it's like visual like it just breaks up the page too yeah yeah and it, i i don't know it's it's easier to go through also like you know, because there are lots of ink colors like um, this, like pink beige, um, where I like it a lot and I like writing with it, mm. but I cannot use it as like, you know, normal mm. journaling purpose because it's it's just too, too light. light. Yeah. And this allows me to use like some of those lighter colors mm -hmm. um, and feel like, you know, they're still serving a purpose and looking nice on the page, but I also don't have to feel worried. Like, is this ain't gonna be something I can use like day to day. Like, mm -hmm. you know, it it's okay if it fades mm -hmm. a little bit um, into the background. But um, yeah, so that's what I keep in this one. And then this is 
um, like I said, the one that I keep, you know, for my planner. Mm -hmm. um, carry I, it every day. Yeah, carry it every day. Usually when we go to work, I, I bring this yeah. with me um, so that I have my schedule if I need it. Um, but I do have my other. Yeah, show us the yeah. three pen. <laughs> yeah, three pen holder. Um, so I do have a three pen holder here. Oh, cute. Um, and then this is kind of where like, you know, I have like my nice pens that like mm -hmm. I'm not in use right now, or maybe it's not in like, you know, my journaling rotation, mm -hmm. but I still like to keep inked up. Um, so I have those here. Um, this one is actually not inked up right now, but I just have it in here. This is um, the Lamy Petrol. Um, I think it was like from 2017 or something. So this along with the Coveco is like the, one of the first That's found nice. pens that I got. Um, and I don't have this inked up right now, but this is like often in my rotation. Um, so that's kind of why it's in here. Um, right now I have in this one, a like calligraphy nib, which mm. is kind of interesting. Let me see if I can show it. Um, nope, it's not working. There we go. So it's a calligraphy nib. It's not really an architect nib or anything like that. It's more for writing Chinese or Japanese characters. Mm. So I'm still trying to figure out this nib, but it's been really interesting to write with. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. but it's been, I, I don't know. I still really, really love this pen. I love the matte body. I love the color. Yeah, cute. Um, yeah, I know that, you know, they're going to be coming out with the petrol and the, um, in the all-star oh. mm -hmm. body mm -hmm. um so that'll be fun yeah um, is it this year they're coming out? i think it's this year yeah, yeah. um so yay petrol um, <laughs> and then so these two um i do have uh inked currently um this one is the other one that i had worked on at the pen show um that's and, also pretty yeah so this one is um platinum 3776 um, this one is the celluloid body, um, and it is tortoise. Um, for anyone who doesn't know what celluloid might be, celluloid is what is used or what was used in like um, old film as well as glasses. Like, you know, that's why it like looks like tortoise shell. Mm -hmm. it, it's like the same material that they would use for glasses. The thing is, it's like highly flammable. So there was a lot of fires caused by film um, oh, back yeah. then. So as a material, it's kind of becoming a little outdated. So it's a little limited, which of course means it's gonna be pricier, mm. but um, the body is really nice. It's got like a semi-translucent look to it. And it kind of has like a warmer feeling. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know how to explain it other than that. Yeah. If you but um, it, it just has like a nice feel to yeah. the weight of the body. And, um, and it has a depth. It does, yeah. it does have like really lovely depth. Um, and this one, it's really pretty. Yeah. And this one, um, I got ground down because I got this. Um, I think I got it on sale, um, and it was a broad nib. And I don't usually do broad mm -hmm. nibs, um, but I was like, you know what? Like, I really like the body of this pen. I'll try it out. And I, I did like it, but I found that I didn't really like um, the way the edges of the lines were round. Mm. Um, like, I feel like I just it didn't look as neat to me. So when I brought it, because it was a broad nib, I was able to ask them to um, grind it down to an architect nib. So it's been really fun. So architect nibs are going to be like pretty thin, like if I can get it. Clearly I haven't written with this today, mm -hmm. um, but if I like use a downstroke, it's gonna be really, really thin. And then if I use the side or um, diagonal strokes, that's where it's gonna so be cool. really wide. Um, and it's nice because like it's wide and also like the edges are more squared off, mm -hmm. um, which I feel like gives it like a really cool look. Um, I just got this ground down. So to be honest, I haven't used it a whole lot because mm -hmm. I don't use this as like my daily writing. Um, one, like you said about the brush pens, like this is kind of what I use for headers mm -hmm. um, and like titles and things like that. So it's like, I haven't used it enough to be like, oh yeah, I'm really good at writing with this. I feel like my handwriting is still pretty, pretty weird with this one. Um, Gotta get used to it. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Um, so this one, what I have right now, because it is such a wide nib, um, I put in um, Studio Organics, Organic Studio mm -hmm. um, Nitrogen, mm -hmm. which is a super like high sheen um, ink. 
And it's hard to see um, when it's like wet, but mm. as it dries, this one has kind of like, oh, actually you can see in like some of the, yeah, the lines up there, like it kind of has like a, almost like a reddish, yeah. um, like light to it, which I really enjoy. And it's like, you can see that best with like a wide nib. So it is kind of nice having like, a thicker mm -hmm. nib pen so I can like enjoy like the little yeah, things like this. even like these two like it looks so different with the same ink mm -hmm. yeah and like it's pretty much like as it dries and I think this one is a little diluted so if I had it like fully mm -hmm. like full strength it would be like even <laughs> shinier than this um but yeah I really really like this pen yeah um, it's one of my favorites and so excited that you got it you yeah it too. yeah yeah I, I really I'm really happy that I was able to find that um, this one is um, similar to your acorn one earlier. This one is the Sailor Meigetsu, um, and this is the Pro Gear Slim. Um, and this one is probably like my first fancy pen. Um, and this one was a gift from my partner. Mm -hmm. um, so you were asking me like, you know, if I could only have like one pen, which one would I keep? It would probably be this one because it does have like a lot of sentimental value to me. Um, and I really, really enjoy the body of it. It's got kind of like a semi-translucency mm -hmm. to it's it. Like a small speckles of like glitter. Yeah, so it's- and like pearl. Yeah, so it's almost, yeah, pearl is mm -hmm. kind of like a nice way of putting it because it's like, it does have like a, like a shimmer to it, but it's not like glitter. In you, yeah. yeah, and it's not like super obvious. Like if I had it like pretty further back, like you, I can't really see yeah. it. Um, but the way that it reflects light is just like really lovely. Um, this one is medium fine, which is um, for a lot of sailors, like limited edition pens, they only come in yeah, medium, medium fine. fine. Um, so that's kind of what's in here. Um, right now in this one, I have um, Ferris Wheel Press o Oyster mm -hmm. Hour, mm -hmm. um, which is kind of like a tan Ooh, beige. Pretty. You can hear like with Sailor, like mm -hmm. it does have like a Scratch. scratchier nib. I like that feeling. I know a lot of people can't stand it, um, but it's, it's a really nice color, um, Ferris Wheel Press Oyster Hour. And, you know, these guys are kind of like also in here because they're not in my, I guess, like my designated color scheme for the month. <laughs> yeah. um, but, you know, like if I'm taking notes or something, like I don't really care about mm -hmm. that. Um, and really it's just for organizing information anyway. So I want to have like other pen ink and stuff. Yeah. Um, so you're a fun, fun pen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but, you know, these guys are the ones that are kind of probably in my rotation the most. Um, I just really like the Coecos and um, Sailors, mm -hmm. especially. Um, and then it's really nice to have this one as like a thicker nib. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, I think I tend to lean towards extra fine. Yeah, same. Um, yeah. So it's... I guess like that's what I normally go for, which is why the architect nib is yeah. like pretty unusual for me. Um, I would love to try that next yeah. big purchase in the future, I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not for a long, not for a while. You should try writing with yeah. this though. It's like really, really fun. Um, but yeah, other than that, I think something that I keep in here, um, this is just like a little mm, brass sheet. Um, clean the... Yeah. So this is just to clean out the inside of like that's a nib smart. if something gets stuck because I am one of those people I will notice mm -hmm. right away and it makes me Yeah, upset. sometimes the paper kind of gets stuck mm -hmm. in between the little lines. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I usually push the ink up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I feel like... Yeah, that's um, smarter. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's just, I'm just one of those people. Mm -hmm. It will get to me. It will, so, yeah. It, so it's it, nice it to have. Um, and clearly like this sheet has been used a lot because it comes like completely, <laughs> it comes completely flat and straight and stuff. And this one is not anymore. So um, you need a new one. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Um, but for um, fountain pens, maybe there's like, like what kind of inks do you like that you feel maybe aren't in your rotation right now? Like if you had to like really think about some of your favorites, like what do you like? I, I think, I love the squishy. Mm -hmm. And also like stuff like I love, I do tend to keep it in my rotation. So mm -hmm. like squishy and Inaho, both are both like discontinued mm -hmm. pilot inks, but I do love using squishy a lot because it's a lot darker. Um, um, and I don't have Inaho with me, but 
I was able to find them in local Kinokuniya, okay. Kinokuniya in Little Tokyo in LA. So I've seen it still. So if anybody's looking, you should go and <laughs> purchase them. But I think once this runs out, I will have to go find new mm -hmm. replacement. But for now, I think I've, I have a lot. So I'm comfortable with That's what good. I got. Yeah, but I recently purchased this one. Okay. Um, the Ferris, Fer Ferris Field Press Atlas Iron Ore. Okay. And that one, I just inked it, and it's really pretty. Um, let me see if I can find. Yeah. So I've inked it with my Lamy. But it's like, it's really nice dark black. And I don't usually have a lot of black mm -hmm. inks, but... I'm kind of liking it. Does it have like a shimmer to it? it I don't think so. Like yeah. But I bought this because I um, used to live in Chicago and I used to take Pink Line to work. Okay. Um, and every time there's like a specific, I think it's like right after Clerk Station, you go like on top of Atlas Stationer, mm -hmm. the stationery store in Chicago. Mm -hmm. um, and I kept this, like, this box reminded me of just like the cold winter commute in mm -hmm. Chicago. And I'm like, oh, I want to have some ink that reminds me of home. Yeah. So I got it. It's cute. <laughs> yeah, but this is like my first time inking my pen with it. So I'm kind of excited to write in it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think. I know that we have like similar tastes in terms of like browns and mm -hmm. greens, greens especially. <laughs> yeah. um, you gave me a lot of greens yeah. and browns. Because I've got to do something with all the inks <laughs> that I have. Um, but I think some of, like this is my um, my Hobonichi weeks oh, yeah. and I have like a bunch of swatches in here. Pretty much like as I um, use inks, I'll like swatch them both to kind of, so that I have like a log, but also so that I can see what it looks like if mm -hmm. I'm doing the color scheme thing. Like I can Put them next to each other and that's stuff. cute that's um, smart too yeah so um i think some of my favorite inks i'm trying to see if i that's have any of them yeah i think diamine earl gray mm. is one of my favorites um, is it blue it's a, it's it's gray oh it's gray. Um, but it's almost kind of like a purple blue mm -hmm. gray mm -hmm. um, i really enjoy that and i feel like um it just flows really well from the pen in it it's dark enough that I feel like it's not distracting mm -hmm. at all, um, but it's still definitely not black. Because um, I, I think for fountain pens, for whatever reason, I tend to move not do, yeah, yeah. I, I don't really do black ink. Um, I prefer like really dark Gray. greens or blues mm -hmm. or something like that, or grays. Um, and then I wanted to see if I have it in here because I do have like different ink samples and stuff, but I don't think I do. So I think the, uh, last year you had a whole page. Right? Yeah, because this is like the new year. So I, I've only gone through so many inks. Um, I think the other one that I really enjoy that sometimes I'll like keep in like this mm -hmm. pen right here is um, the Robert Oster Melon Tea, which mm -hmm. is almost like a, like, I don't know, kind of like a, like a green kind of like this where it's like a brown green. Um, and it's really, really pretty. Um, so I feel like those two inks, the Melon Tea and then the Earl Grey are mm -hmm. probably the ones that I Kind of keep going back to mm -hmm. um is it always in your rotation not always but often often um yeah to the like and i have to kind of like purposefully because i think that was melon tea i think was what, what was in here last mm -hmm. um and i had to switch it and i was like let's really try to do something that isn't one of those two <laughs> inks um but yeah it's been fun um to have like you know a really Option. different color yeah. and I, I just really like that about fountain pens that you can change um, it up change the options mm -hmm. yeah and there's a lot more inks that i've never tried you yeah. know and there will be more no i know as... so it just never ends <laughs> yeah for sure but it's nice that with found pens it's like it's something that you can hold on mm -hmm. to and grow like a more sentimental connection mm -hmm. with because it's meant to last yes um but yeah, I think that that's what we use. So I think we're going to go ahead and switch over to the front facing camera. Um, and then we are going to go into the Q&A. Um, so give me one sec. All right. 
There's one second. I'm not sure. Yeah, it's not showing. Yeah, the, the yeah. All right, so Q&A. Um, Mokako, do you have some questions for us? OK, so let's go ahead and start with that. Uh, Emil, how is your trip to CA Pen Show? Um, anything interesting to share? Um, you know, I've been to a couple conventions before, but never like specifically for fountain pens. Mm -hmm. um, so I I had a really interesting time because I'm actually used to much bigger conventions. Mm -hmm. So being able to see like this room where so many people are passionate about, um, you know, fountain pens has been really cool. And I don't know, I got to see some like representatives from companies that I care about. So it was kind of like nice to see that they are like present there mm -hmm. um, instead of just like a product that you buy. Um, but I think the main thing for me was like having my pens ground because that- Those that your purpose kind that of. That was, yeah, when I went in there, I was like, this is what I really want to do. Mm -hmm. um, and I was really lucky in that um, there was space so that I could be on the list. Um, if you're interested, we also have the link to the person who ground my nibs. Um, that is going to be on our Instagram. So feel free to contact them. I know mm -hmm. that they're in like, um, I think close to Altadena, Pasadena yeah, area. They're local. Yeah, yeah, they're local. So it was really nice to have them do it right there. And the nice thing is like, you know, you can always ship pens to someone to have them ground but when I was sitting there and talking to him like I could test it and be like oh could I get you know the downstroke a little finer or like you know this is the specific problem I'm having with this pen um, and he was also able to like look at the angle that I write at and kind of take that into consideration when um, he was adjusting mm -hmm. my yeah. Yeah. And that was a lot of fun that was really cool yeah so I think that, that that's probably the, the most interesting and fun thing for mm -hmm. me yeah <laughs> um, so let's see we have the next question um and then oh how is my highlight yeah, how is your highlight? <laughs> um i think i this is my second pen show okay um i went to the sf pen show last year mm -hmm. in the august and that was I went there on saturday which is like most chaotic day mm -hmm. ever and i I didn't prepare <laughs> anything. I just like just got there and I was super overwhelmed at SF Pen Show. So this time I was like, okay, I'm gonna bring a notebook, I'm gonna bring certain things, but I'm not gonna overbring all my stationery. Mm -hmm. So I feel like I was a lot more prepared mm -hmm. for LA Pen Show. And then we went there on Friday. Mm -hmm. So I know a lot of people still worked, you know, locals are still working on Fridays. So it was like it was busy, but it was not overwhelming mm -hmm. compared to SF Pen Show. There's still a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, my highlight was just to see a lot of people. I got to see some friends um, out of town at the Pen Show. That was kind of fun to mm -hmm. catch up and see them at the Pen Show. Um, but yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. no, no pen grinds, no expensive purchases this time. I just went this there. Time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just went there to support, you know. Well, yeah. the pen enthusiastic people. Yeah, but I mean, it was just fun to walk yeah. around too and see everything that. Mm -hmm. um, and it was fun to go with the team too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, so yeah, it, it was a fun, fun day. <laughs> um, I definitely took a nap after I got home. Have you compared the calligraphy nib to the italic nib? Um, you know, I haven't. Mm. Um, and I feel like I don't really know, like, I haven't done the Lamy italic nib, so I can't really say for sure. Something that I have noticed, though, is that um, the calligraphy nib is definitely not meant for, like, um, like you know, regular cursive. Mm -hmm. um, it's definitely more for made like for, like... Stylized, very specific fonts. Yeah, right? for, Type like, of, uh, yeah, for, like, more you know, Asian characters and mm. like, you know, the shapes that specifically those are created by. So if you're kind of like going back and forth on what you want to try, like I still do like the calligraphy nib, but if you're wanting it for more like um, specifically like Western um, calligraphy, then it might not be what you're looking for. So something to keep in mind if you do decide to go for that mm -hmm. option. Um, yeah, any mm -hmm. other questions? Let's see. 
Do either of you feel your pens have personalities and or do you go to different ones to get specific feelings while writing? Mm. Yeah. What do you think? Let me, let me stare at my pen. I know, we have to like, think about it. <laughs> I feel like yes. Mm -hmm. um, like whenever I want to write about my feelings or like what's going on in my mind, I do reach towards my pilot kaede. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know why. Maybe the wood, like touching the wood material. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Maybe that makes me feel more grounded, but I tend to grab towards that. Mm -hmm. um, and it kind of feels more comforting. Mm -hmm. How about you? Um, I think... I think when I'm trying to go for something casual, like I do think about Koekos. Mm. So like if I am, I don't know, just kind of like, oh, I want to take a pen on the go or like, you know, and that sounds functional, but I, I also mean like feeling wise, it like feels more casual yeah. to me. Um, kind of like a casual jacket would be different from a formal jacket. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it's kind of like, I like using those as my go-to pens and that's why they're normally in like my planner mm. case. Um, and then I think for more like um, like reflection or like emotionally charged writing, like mm -hmm. things that aren't like planner stuff and more like for journaling, um, I really do like the way the Meigetsu mm -hmm. writes. Um, mm -hmm. I think also because it's the medium fine, so um, it lends itself well to like a large amount of writing. Yeah. Um, it's a nice nib size. Yeah, yeah, because it still feels like a like it's fine. Body, yeah, a body font like writing mm -hmm. material, but it's not, it also shows like, you know, the shading from ink and such mm -hmm. and um, shows a good amount of like the color itself. Um, yeah, so mm -hmm. I think that these two are kind of, like those are the the feelings or the, the characters like associated with them. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but I don't know, that was an interesting question. question. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, um, AC. Yeah, thank you, AC. Um, <laughs> see stuff and things with florida girl i'm looking to purchase my first sailor pro gear any advice mm. hmm. they're expensive pro gear sure. is expensive yeah pro gear um, i don't have a pro gear pen i only have a slim mm -hmm. i have two i think i have make it two mm -hmm. and then the nuts one right um our advice is find the body that you like yeah. color wise because there is a lot of options with pro gears yeah. and pro gear slims yeah i would like in you know we've kind of compared the sizes before mm -hmm. like it's only like a little bit bigger than the pro gear yeah. slim um but i think that what you're saying makes a lot of sense like wait until you see a body that you really want because if if there's one that you are kind of like oh i kind of like it um you know it's a, a big commitment to yeah like don't don't settle for I kind of like it. Like yeah. they will always be coming out with new colors. Um, There's always limited editions too. Yeah, yeah it so it's like happens. just keep an eye out and like you'll find something that like really calls for you. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of the nib sizes, I think best way to know is like I, I think referencing different website. There was a one yeah. website you mentioned with a Gullet. Uh, yeah, Gullet Pens Goulet. has like a really good, um, like they have like an archive of all of the line widths of their pens. Um, so especially if you're going for, um, you know, your pro gear and that's like an expensive nib, you want it to be something that you're possibly going to use mm -hmm. like all the time um go on to Goulet's site you can kind of compare it to make maybe nibs that you already have and see like what the line width is like mm -hmm. um, so maybe going into a physical store that yeah. carries i know that that's hard hard to do but yeah, yeah. but <coughs> if you can do it like going mm -hmm. into a store you know i i feel like i suggest that but i don't know if i've ever done that myself yeah, like gone same. into a store and been like I should really try it out first. Um, I have no patience, um, so I'll always just go for it. Yeah, but um, yeah, I hope that you find one that you <coughs> you enjoy. Though, um, let's see. Do we have any other questions? Um, so we have two more. When shopping for a pen, what are your priorities? Aesthetic, function, or the story <coughs> behind the pen? Excuse me. <coughs> let's see. Aesthetic, function, or the story behind the pen? Um, I think for me, 
aesthetic and function. Um, I, you can kind of see my, I like a lot of like yellows, greens, browns, like warmer mm -hmm. tone, tone. So aesthetically, I kind of tend to gear towards that color scheme. Right. Um, and then functionality, like I think I buy fountain pens for journaling purposes. Right. So I wanted to make sure that it writes smoothly. Right. And then there are some pens that I've purchased before that doesn't write as smooth as I want it to. And I those I tend to not touch mm -hmm. or use as much. And I kind of feel guilty of not using them. But I think functionality is pretty important. Um, in the story, I don't think I have a lot of story behind purchases of my fountain pens. Yeah, I think I'm kind of similar in that, you know, I'm looking for function. I'm looking for aesthetics. Mm -hmm. I think maybe even more than function, I'm first thinking about aesthetics. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I look at a pen and if it is attractive to me, if I like the color, or the mm -hmm. way that it looks, the design itself then I'm going to start thinking about like, okay, what have people said about the mm -hmm. function of this pen? Like, what does it look like? How does it write? Um, but if it doesn't look good in the first place, it can be as functional or write as beautifully as you want. I do not want yeah, to same. purchase a pen that just doesn't aesthetically speak mm -hmm. to me. Um, but I think that story is, story is an added bonus. I feel like it's not usually there, but like, you know, the, the pen that my partner gave me is always going to have like mm -hmm. an emotional significance to me. And, you know, the, some of the pens that I got were used. Um, and that has a nice feeling to me. Cause I, I like knowing that a pen had a life before mm -hmm. me. Um, it makes it feel kind of like, you know, it is going to be a long lasting item um, because it, it's had a life before me too. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of like a bonus, but it's also not something that like, I have to find. Yeah, and um, you also not always are provided with that story, yeah, right? When exactly. you're purchasing used. Yeah. Um, um, so, yeah. yeah, I guess, yeah, function and aesthetic aesthetics. first. Yeah. yeah. Or aesthetics first for me, mm -hmm, then function. Okay. Um, but thank you, Leo, for yeah, your question. Good. Great question. Um, and then, stuff and things with Florida Girl. Which fountain pen would you gift as a first time fountain pen user to introduce them to fountain pens? I think Kakuno for me. For you, Kakuno? Yeah, because it's affordable. And also it's it's kind of shaped nicely. I don't have a sample with me, but that was my first fountain pen. And that was like easy to clean. I learned how to clean fountain pens <laughs> with Kakuno because it's, you know, you don't, there's like no fear of like breaking the nib, mm -hmm. you know, it was like kind of easy to get in. And also I got the converter, so I was able to test a lot of different inks. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, maybe like if you're gifting, wait, hold on, let me to introduce them to fountain pen. So yeah, for beginners, I think Preppy is also a good one too. Yeah. Um, I, I was thinking, yeah. I was thinking, um, like I have gifted people fountain pens like that haven't used them before. And I, I gave um, Preppy mm -hmm. because, um, you know, for one thing, they're just like so inexpensive. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you break it, you don't have to worry about like, yeah. you know, how much you invested in it. Um, and I think it's also nice that the, you know, the body itself, like it's not a bad looking pen, but it also doesn't look like a really fancy pen. Yeah. Um, and I think people can be intimidated mm -hmm. by fountain pens. Um, like, oh, it's too fancy for me or I don't know how to write with it. And I think it makes it look really approachable. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But I really enjoy the way it writes. Like mm -hmm. even comparing them to like, you know, my fancier, more expensive pens, it still has like a really nice writing yeah. quality. I think Platinum definitely has a really nice nibs mm -hmm. um, for the cheaper one. And I think the preppy nib and the pregial nibs are the same. Okay. And pregials are usually like goes from like thirty to fifty dollars. Okay. But they use the same preppy pen, which is like six dollar pens. Mm -hmm. Um. So it is very affordable and also like easy to use. And I think if you're gifting somebody a their first fountain pens, you want them to enjoy them. Yeah. Right. 
because um, you have to think about like the pressure that you're, you're giving, you're giving them. them. Like, I feel like it is a certain amount of pressure when you're gifted like a really nice thing. Yeah. Like, it's like oh, yeah. I gotta use this, but yeah. I don't know how to. <laughs> yeah. Or if it, if I don't enjoy this thing, there's something wrong. With me. Yeah. Like, I'm not fancy enough. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I feel it's like approachable yeah, pattern. Yeah, because you want them to more than anything like, yeah. really enjoy the experience. And then maybe first. like give them like a tiny samples of different inks too, like. Focusing on inks, different types of inks, rather than the actual pen itself. Mm -hmm. Well, you can drag, <laughs> like, drag them into the beautiful world of fountain pens and inks. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, thank you, uh, Florida girl. Um, but, you know, I still use the party. Yeah. And I think that's another reason why I recommend mm -hmm. it. So, yeah, I think that that was our last question. Um, yeah, so awesome. yeah, thank you guys so much for, <laughs> for joining us today. It was a lot of fun. Like yeah. I said, I'm, I'm sorry for the, the sound problems in the beginning. Technical glitch. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's Sunday morning. I know. Um, but, um, but thank you. Yeah. We appreciate you joining us. <laughs> yeah, thank you for taking your time to spend um, your Sunday morning yeah. with us. And we'll um, be open yes, today. From 12 to 5. Um, we do have some new items. We have um, the new covers, um, which you can kind of see like right here, where these are from Penelope and they're canvas covers. So we'll have those in store. Um, and then we also have, um, yeah, we have um, a new brand, Postalco, that we just started carrying. So those are out in the store as well. So if you're coming by, pay, be sure to take a look at those. Um, but otherwise, yeah. Yeah, that's and, it. Yeah. Until <laughs> next time, next subject. Time. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, see you next time. Until then, keep writing. Right. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>